Air India Flight 171. Air India Flight 171 was a wide body Boeing 7878 Dreamliner, which had flown for about 11 years. The plane had completed 7,800 takeoffs and touchdowns and overall spent more than 41,000 hours in the air. On June 12, 2025, it took off from Ahmedabad International Airport in India, heading to London Gatwick. The aircraft carried 230 passengers, 169 Indian, 53 British, 1 Canadian, and 7 Portuguese nationals and 12 crew. According to information from the India, the captain of the flight had accumulated 8,200 hours of flying experience, was line training captain, and was about to retire. The first officer had accumulated 1,100 hours of flying experience. Unexpectedly, shortly after takeoff, just about 30 seconds in, when the plane had climbed to about 625 feet, it suddenly started falling down. The crew declared mayday, no thrust, no taking lift, and the aircraft crashed into the BJ Medical College in Meganinagar suburb and exploded into a huge fireball. CCTV footage and flight tracking showed the plane couldn't keep climbing and was losing lift. Just before the crash, the pilot sent out a mayday call, but after that, all communication stopped. Tragically, of the 242 people on board, 241 sadly didn't make it. Incredibly, one passenger survived, a 40-year-old British national who managed to walk away from the wreckage, though he was injured. The plane also hit some buildings on the ground, killing at least 39, raising the total loss of life to 280. Ground witnesses reported the aircraft impacted hotel buildings with an estate-run college for doctors. One student was able to jump out of the hotel and survived with injuries. About 50 to 60 students have been injured. Right now, the investigation is being led by India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau. With support from experts in the UK and the US, Boeing, GE, and others. The black boxes have been recovered, and investigators are now trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. Early theories included a bird strike, fuel contamination, or pilot error, like improper flap or landing gear settings. Some experts noted that the aircraft's nose was unusually high and it may have taken off with the flaps retracted or the gear down. Both are dangerous conditions. But recent evidence and clear audio have changed the direction of this investigation. A sharp, high-quality version of a rooftop video recording has surfaced, and in it, aviation experts identified a critical detail. The deployment of the aircraft's RAT, Ram Air Turbine. The RAT is a small emergency propeller that automatically deploys during a total electrical or hydraulic failure, or if both engines fail. It generates just enough power to keep the plane's basic systems alive in extreme emergencies. The visual footage shows the RAT deployed, a clear indicator that something catastrophic occurred. More tellingly, the audio captured a high-pitched propeller-like whine, a distinct sound made by the rat spinning at high speed. That sound, combined with the survivor's account of a loud bang and lights flickering before impact, suggests a sudden dual-engine failure. Finally, reports also indicate that the captain had just radioed in a mayday, stating a loss of thrust. With all this visual, audio, eyewitness, and radio confirmation, Many now believe that Flight 171 suffered a total power loss moments after takeoff. What caused both engines to flame out remains unknown, but the black boxes may soon reveal the answer. Investigators are now prioritizing the engine failure theory as the most likely cause behind one of India's deadliest aviation disasters. Japan Airlines Flight 123 Japan Airlines Flight 123 was a domestic flight operating a Boeing 747-SR, a large jet designed for short routes with a high number of passengers. On August 12, 1985, the plane took off from Tokyo's Haneda Airport and was heading to Osaka. It was a busy travel time in Japan, during the holiday season, when many families traveled to visit relatives. There were 524 people on board, including passengers and crew. About 12 minutes after takeoff, while climbing to cruising altitude, the plane suddenly suffered a major failure in the back part of the cabin wall, called the rear pressure bulkhead. This part helps the plane keep normal air pressure inside. When it broke, it caused a loud explosion of air and ripped off the entire vertical tail fin. That piece of the plane helped steer and balance it in the air. Even worse, the brake also damaged all four hydraulic systems, which meant the pilots could no longer control the plane in the usual way. The pilots did everything they could. They used the engine power to try turning and leveling the aircraft, but without hydraulics, it kept going up and down in wave-like movements. After about half an hour of struggling to stay in the air, the plane crashed into a mountain about 60 miles northwest of Tokyo. Out of all the people on board, only four survived. Investigators later found that the rear pressure bulkhead had been repaired incorrectly seven years earlier. The metal repair was done using fewer fasteners than required, which weakened it. Over time, tiny cracks formed and grew with each flight. The weak spot finally gave out on this flight, causing one of the deadliest crashes in aviation history. Jeju Air Flight 2216 
Jeju Air Flight 2216 was a passenger flight traveling from Bangkok, Thailand to Muan, South Korea. The Boeing 737-800 aircraft carried 175 passengers and six crew members. The flight was scheduled during the busy end-of-year travel season, as many people were heading home or taking vacations during the holidays. As the plane approached Muan International Airport for landing, it ran into trouble. The aircraft hit a flock of birds, later confirmed to be migratory ducks called Baikal teals. The bird strike affected both engines. The pilots sent out a mayday signal and attempted to go around for another try at landing. On the second attempt, something went very wrong. The landing gear didn't come down. The plane touched down on its belly, much farther down the runway than it should have. Because it landed too fast and too far, it couldn't stop in time. It slid off the end of the runway and crashed into a large concrete structure that supported navigation equipment. The crash destroyed the plane. All 175 passengers and four crew members died. Two cabin crew members in the rear section of the plane survived with injuries. That part of the aircraft had broken off during the crash, which likely saved them. Investigators later found blood and feathers from the birds in both engines. But experts said a bird strike alone shouldn't cause such a total failure. The plane's black boxes had also stopped recording several minutes before the crash, pointing to a possible electrical failure. Experts also criticized the hard concrete structure at the end of the runway. It should have been built to crumble on impact to absorb the force. Instead, it stayed rigid and made the crash even more deadly. Lion Air Flight 610 Lion Air Flight 610 was operated by a Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft and was scheduled to fly from Jakarta to the city of Pankal, Penang on Bangka Island on October 29, 2018. The flight took off with 181 passengers and 8 crew members. Many of the people on board were commuting for work, including government employees and business travelers. This was a short and routine flight that usually lasted about an hour. Soon after takeoff, the plane started having problems. The pilots noticed that the nose of the aircraft kept pointing downward on its own. They tried to pull it back up several times, but the plane kept fighting their control. This happened over and over while the aircraft was climbing. The pilots didn't know that an automatic system inside the plane called MCAS was pushing the nose down based on faulty information from a broken sensor. After about 13 minutes of struggling, the plane lost too much altitude and crashed into the Java Sea at high speed. All 189 people on board died. When investigators examined the crash, they found that one of the sensors meant to measure the angle of the plane had failed and was giving wrong information to the flight system. The MCAS system responded by forcing the nose of the plane down, even though there was no real danger. The pilots weren't told how to turn the system off because Boeing didn't fully explain it during training. Experts later said this crash could have been prevented if the faulty sensor had been fixed and if the pilots had been better informed about the system. Air India Express Flight 812 Air India Express Flight 812 was a passenger flight traveling from Dubai to Mangalore, India. It was a Boeing 737-800 aircraft and carried 160 passengers and six crew members. Most people on board were Indian citizens who had been working in the United Arab Emirates and were returning home to visit their families. As the plane approached Mangalore Airport, the pilots prepared to land on a runway that sits on top of a hill. This type of runway is tricky because there are steep drop-offs on both ends. On the day of the crash, the plane came in too high and too fast. Instead of landing near the start of the runway, it touched down more than 5,000 feet down a total runway that was about 8,000 feet long. That left less than 3,000 feet to slow down and stop the aircraft. The pilots applied the brakes and deployed reverse thrust, but it wasn't enough. The plane couldn't stop in time. It rolled off the end of the runway, broke through a fence, and fell down the hillside. The plane split into pieces and caught fire. Out of the 166 people on board, 158 died and only 8 survived. The investigation found that the captain had been asleep for over an hour before landing. When he woke up, he made poor decisions, likely because he wasn't fully alert. The co-pilot warned him three times to go around and try landing again, but the captain ignored the advice. Air China Flight 129 Air China Flight 129, the Boeing 767-2J6ER, was an international passenger flight from Beijing, China to Busan, South Korea. It was carrying 155 passengers and 11 crew members. Many of the passengers were South Koreans returning home, while others were Chinese citizens traveling for business or vacation. On the day of the crash, the weather in Busan was not good. There was light rain and fog, which made it difficult to see. The flight was originally set to land on one runway, but due to shifting winds, air traffic control told the pilots to use a different runway. To land on the new runway, the pilots had to perform a special type of turn called a circling approach. This move requires clear visibility and careful timing. During the turn, the pilots lost sight of the runway and waited too long to make their final approach. 
As a result, the plane flew too low and crashed into Mount Doday, which is located nearly three miles from the airport. The aircraft broke apart and caught fire. Out of the 166 people on board, 129 died and only 37 survived. The investigation found several serious problems. The flight crew had not been properly trained for this kind of circling landing at that airport. They also didn't follow normal procedures like making clear callouts or doing a missed approach when they couldn't see the runway. To make matters worse, the air traffic controller giving instructions at the time was unlicensed and gave wrong altitude guidance. Air Philippines Flight 541 Air Philippines Flight 541 was a domestic flight traveling from Manila to Davao City. The aircraft was a Boeing 737-200 carrying 124 passengers and 7 crew members. The flight was completely full because many people were heading home for the Easter holidays to be with their families. As the plane neared Davao Airport, another aircraft was still on the runway, so the pilots were told to circle around until the runway was clear. The weather at the time was bad, with low clouds and heavy fog. Instead of using the plane's instruments to stay at a safe altitude, the pilots chose to fly visually, meaning they tried to rely on what they could see out the window. While circling at a low altitude, the aircraft flew too close to the ground and hit a coconut tree. The impact happened about 500 feet above sea level. A part of the wing broke off and the pilots lost control. They tried to recover by increasing engine power, but it was too late. The plane crashed into a hill on Samal Island, a few miles from the airport. The aircraft broke apart and caught fire. Sadly, all 131 people on board were killed. The investigation found that the crash happened because the pilots did not follow correct procedures during poor weather. They flew too low without using instruments. Also, the aircraft did not have a modern ground warning system, which could have helped alert the crew before the crash. Adam Air Flight 574 Adam Air Flight 574 was a domestic flight in Indonesia, traveling from the city of Surabaya to Manado. The aircraft was a Boeing 737-400 and had 96 passengers and 6 crew members on board. Most of the people were returning home after celebrating the New Year's holidays. While the plane was cruising over the Makassar Strait, the pilots noticed a problem with the aircraft's navigation system. This system helps tell the plane where it is and which direction it's facing. While trying to fix this issue, the pilots switched the system into a manual mode, which required them to control the aircraft directly. But neither pilot actually took control of the plane, and the autopilot quietly shut off without them realizing it. Because no one was flying the plane, it slowly began to roll to the right and start descending. The changes were slow at first, and the pilots didn't notice anything wrong until it was too late. By the time they tried to fix it, the aircraft was already in a steep dive. The plane was falling too fast, and the force broke it apart midair. It crashed into the sea, and all 102 people on board died. The investigation found that the pilots were so focused on fixing the navigation issue that they forgot to fly the plane. They didn't follow basic flying procedures and weren't trained well enough for emergencies like this. Experts also said the airline had a poor safety record and had failed many inspections before. Silk Air Flight 185 Silk Air Flight 185 was a passenger flight traveling from Jakarta, Indonesia to Singapore. The aircraft was operated by a Boeing 737-300 with 97 passengers and 7 crew members on board. It was a short international flight, expected to take around 1 hour and 20 minutes. The weather along the route was mostly clear and there were no warnings of trouble as the plane left Jakarta. About halfway through the flight, while cruising at around 35,000 feet, something went terribly wrong. The plane suddenly went into a steep dive, almost straight down. It was so fast that the passengers and crew had almost no time to react. Within less than one minute, the aircraft crashed into the Musi River in southern Sumatra. The impact was so violent that the plane broke apart instantly. There were no survivors. All 104 people on board were killed. The investigation was led by Indonesian authorities with help from the United States. Indonesian investigators said the evidence was not strong enough to point to a clear cause. But the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board came to a different conclusion. They believe the crash was caused on purpose by the captain. They said he manually pushed the plane into the dive, and there was no sign of mechanical failure. Later, during a lawsuit in the United States, a jury ruled that the crash may have been caused by a problem with the plane's rudder system. This involved a small valve that could fail and cause the plane to lose control. 